Hi everyone and welcome to another tutorial. So in today's video we are going to do an oil painting of a bird in sort of like a a la prima style which refers to a wet on wet approach. I want to share how to get the depth of a multi-layered painting without actually painting 20 layers on top of each other. Now if you've been following the tutorials on the Color by Felix YouTube channel you'll know that I've done a tutorial on a Kingfisher before. Now if we put these two next to each other you can see a tremendous improvement in detail and especially in depth. And the best part is the time is about the same. Today is all about creating that extra depth and definition with quick and easy steps. We'll cover the supplies as we go but there will also be a full list of the supplies that I'll be using in the description below. I'll be using the stretch canvas, it's around 20 by 30 centimeters, and we are going to start with our charcoal sticks for drawing the outlines and getting our shape blocked in. I prefer using charcoal for this stage because it's a lot more forgiving when it comes to correcting and erasing mistakes. I start by softly drawing two straight lines down and across to find an approximate center point, and then looking for shapes in my reference photo. Then I'm going to make small marks to indicate where and the size of my shapes. We have a circle here for the head and then a more oval shape for the body. This will help with the overall perspective of our subject. And a little rectangle shape here for the tail. After our quick and basic shape layout, I use a paper towel to soften the grid lines. I then start drawing my outlines looking at my reference photo and using those shapes underneath as my guide. I know that the charcoal drawing can be a little bit hard to see on camera, so I added a digital guide to help you with the drawing process. At this point I realized that I was drawing my bird a little bit small for my liking, so I decided to redraw and scale it off camera. I still find it very hard drawing accurately and trying not to be in the way while filming. So please be patient with me when I skip over some of the sketching process a little. I'm only roughly sketching to get the basic outlines of the bird and then I'll focus more on getting the shape right when I add my highlights and shadows. Now having our outlines ready, I'm switching over to Black Band Pastel with its applicator tool. You can use normal charcoal or even graphite pencil as long as you have a fixative to spray your sketch with afterwards. This will be our very first and important layer of bringing in that depth into our painting. Using the reference photo, I'm going to roughly bring in some shadows and make sure that I still have the different values from very dark to very light. This step is basically about quickly creating a full black and white drawing, except you don't have to worry about any fine details. Just focus on the values. This is actually also a really great way to practice your values in sketching. If you're interested in more information on my beginning process and the products I use and why I use them, you can head over to my own YouTube channel and have a look at my beginning process video there. If it's your first time using the applicator tool, it could be a little tricky to get the hang of it at first, so I suggest just practicing and playing around with it on an extra piece of paper, seeing how it reacts to different movements, etc. I'm also going over the outlines to make sure I don't lose them later. I pick up fresh pasta and press a little harder to get this very dark shade and then again work more softly in the lighter areas.
Now I'm going to cover the whole area with a very light pastel to get a mid-tone and make sure there's no white areas. And then I'm going to shade one side of the background a bit darker and this will add a little bit more depth. Now getting out your erasers for a very satisfying step. I like to have a different variety of erasers so that I can swap out if I want to. Different sizes can be a really big help. For smaller details I especially like this mechanical eraser. As for larger or less detailed areas I'll be using these erasers. Then I will be using the kneaded eraser for soft blended areas. This is perfect for softening lines or blending out dark areas in the background. We are now going to erase our highlights and with this step we are also going to create the illusion of the details. Now when you're racing, don't worry too much about being clean or perfect, it's exactly in that streakiness that we create the effect of the feathers. This whole drawing part is not about getting perfect details. It shouldn't take you hours trying to perfect everything. The most important part is getting your perspective and your highlights and shadows correct. So to make the branch stand out from the background, I'm going to add a highlight just beneath the branch over here. Now using the kneaded eraser like I explained earlier to soften and blend out these lines over here. Now that we have our full black and white drawing, we are ready to move on to the next step. So before moving on to the next step, now is the time to spray your sketch with a fixative if you have one, especially if you use charcoal or graphite pencil for your drawing. 
As of yet, I've never owned or used a fixative on my sketches. This is why I prefer the pan pasta because it's a lot more forgiving when it comes to smudging. So in the next step, I will be showing you how I protect my pan pasta drawing from smudging or mixing in with my oil paints. But if you use charcoal or graphite pencil for the shading, I would highly recommend spraying your sketch with a fixative first. So what you'll need is a large paintbrush, transparent acrylic paint, my go-to is Burnt Sienna from Winsor & Newton. We use acrylic paint for this part because we want it to dry fast and we use transparent paint because we want to see our sketch underneath. You'll also need water, preferably in a spray bottle, paper towel or a paint cloth and then you will also need a small paintbrush. So we are going to spray our canvas with water and also our paintbrush on both sides. Then we're also going to spray a little bit of water on our paint. The more water you add, the more transparent your paint will be and that's totally up to you. The water helps us to apply the paint a little bit easier and it keeps the paint and the surface wet for longer. This will help us with the following step which is removing the highlights with the paintbrush. For this step, using a large paintbrush is very important, especially if you didn't spray your sketch with a fixative. Covering the surface as quick as possible and with the least amount of movement will prevent the pan pasta from smearing or mixing in with your paint. While the paint is still wet, we're going to use our small flat or angled brush to lift the highlights. Spraying the paintbrush with water will make it easier to lift the paint, especially when it starts to dry. You will also need a paper towel at hand to wipe your brush clean every time you lift some paint. As you move through the step, the paint will start to dry, so try to move as quick as possible. And keeping your paintbrush clean and wet will also help with lifting the highlights. I try to lift the whitest areas first and as the paint dries, I move to the other highlighted areas.
Now finally getting to the oil painting part, we will quickly go over the supplies you'll be needing while the acrylic dries. If you want to speed up the drying time of the acrylic, you can use a blow dryer. So first you'll be needing paper towel, two containers of turpentine, one with clean turpentine and one to clean your brushes in. I usually use the clean turpentine to wet my brushes in or maybe add a little bit of it to my paint to make it more fluidy. You can also use medium such as linseed oil etc. Then you need a palette knife for mixing your paint. And then for the oil paints you're gonna need titanium white, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow and cadmium pale. Then olive green, this is optional. You could use benzene in the place of it, but it should be a transparent color. And then also raw amber. Then for the brushes, a filbert size 10, flat brush size 4, and then any type of a small sword brush or angled brush will work. Oh, and I almost forgot lamb black and also a very tiny detail brush. So for the next few minutes, we're just quickly going to set up our palette and mix the colors that we're going to use. So we're going to start off with some yellow ochre, cadmium yellow and burnt sienna. Then we need a similar color, just a little bit more vibrant and lighter. So I'm going to use cadmium yellow and burnt sienna. And also a little bit of the cadmium yellow pale. They look a lot more similar on camera, but the one should be a little bit more vibrant and slightly lighter than the first one we mixed. Now we're going to mix a light yellow with titanium white and cadmium yellow pale. Maybe a little more yellow. Then we're going to mix some blue, taking ultramarine blue and titanium white. I'm just going to add a tiny amount of cadmium yellow pale. Then we're going to create another blue a little bit darker with ultramarine blue, titanium white and cadmium yellow. Just going to clean my palette so I can start new. Now I'm taking titanium white and a very tiny amount of burnt amber and yellow ochre. Just gonna add a little bit extra burnt amber and yellow ochre. Now I'm going to take a little of that color, add some more burnt amber and yellow ochre to create a darker shade. Now taking some titanium white again with yellow ochre. Now we're going to take burnt sienna and a little bit less of ultramarine blue. This is going to create a really dark, almost black color. Maybe just a little bit more blue. Then for another shade of blue, I'm going to use ultramarine blue, titanium white and a very tiny amount of black. Always be very careful when adding black. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. So I will keep adding small amounts of black until I'm satisfied with the color. So that's our palette for now.
I'm starting with my Filbert size 10, dipping it into the clean turpentine and then dabbing it once on each side of a paper towel to get the excess turpentine out. We want our brush wet but not drenched in medium or liquid. Then I'm going to start with my very transparent olive green from Winsor & Newton. You can use any dark but very transparent color for this step, like burnt sienna or burnt amber. And now we're going to paint over our whole subject. Now using a paint cloth we are going to blend out our paint as much as possible, leaving a very thin layer of paint. Something valuable I learned working with oils, especially painting wet on wet, is to start from your dark colors moving to your light colors, like building your light colors on top of your dark colors, and also working from your transparent colors and moving to your more opaque colors. So I like starting with the eyes, using our d brush, dipping it into the clean turpentine, and just pressing out the excess turpentine on the sides here, and then taking our lamp black. If you are struggling to apply nice and smooth brush strokes, just try adding a little bit more of the fluid, either the linseed oil or the serpentine to your paint. This can help with the application of the oil paints and also help create more smooth lines, especially when adding details. So we are just filling in our eye, just leaving open that highlighted area. Now cleaning our brush and make sure it's very clean because it's black paint and we don't want it mixed with our white. Now we're going to take a good amount of white on our detail brush. And this is important, you don't want to mix it or blend it with your black paint. You're literally just going to dab it onto that highlighted area. For the eyelid, we're going to start with our unmixed cadmium yellow pale. And we're just going to start adding in some color around the eye. Be careful to mix your yellow with your black. As you can see, I'm very careful with the eye around the edges. I usually leave a very small gap between the two colors so the black and yellow doesn't mix. Now 
Now taking some of the light yellow that we have mixed for the bottom lid area. Now also just adding a little bit of that lighter yellow here on the top. Now taking some of the unmixed cadmium yellow for the bottom area here. Now we're going to add some raw amber just beneath the yellow here. And we're just carefully going to blend it up into the yellow. Now I'm just going to mix some of my olive green and my burnt sienna just to create a little bit of a shadow color. You can also stick with the burnt amber or the burnt sienna and then I'm just going to add a little shadow here. Now taking our number 4 flat brush and also dipping it into the clean turpentine. Then getting the excess turpentine out by using the paper towel again. So now we're going to take some burnt amber and we're going to start painting over this dark area over here. This might not be very visible on camera but we do want to cover each area with some oil paints. So we're just going to cover the front top area with the burnt amber and then we're going to switch to this very dark blue and then we're going to start adding that here in the back area. Even though this area is black, I'm not adding pure black paint because like I said earlier, using pure black can flatten your image very quickly. As you can see we didn't add this blue back at the very curved back area here. We will now go back and add burnt amber. I use my flat brush in a diagonal flick motion while following the shape of the head to create this feather effect. After cleaning your brush, we will now take burnt sienna and start adding it in. Leaving the stop area for now. Taking our dark blue black and start adding it in in our darkest areas. As we continue adding our dark colors, I use my flat brush in a back and forth flick motion. This will help create the illusion of the feather effect.
Now for this triangular shape I'm going to take the pure black which is less transparent and creates that slightly darker shade. We're just going to add it right beneath the blue. Then switching back to the blue for the edge here, the more transparent color will just work better when we add the lighter color next to it. Now I'm continuing with the dark blue, just adding it in here and there. When painting wet on wet, it's been helpful for me to start with thin layers instead of adding thick layers of paint. Because when adding the lighter colors on top, it's easier to do so than trying to add it on very thick layers of paint. Now switching to the wing feathers, you can of course use a different or smaller brush if you feel more comfortable with it. As you may be able to tell already, our black and white drawing now acts not only as our first layer of highlights and shadows, but also as our guide to where we add our colors. As we continue with the wing feathers, notice how I treat the feathers almost individually, leaving very small gaps between them where the highlighter's areas will be. This helps to ensure that we can still see where the individual feathers are and when we will add the whites later. Now we're also going to add some of that dark blue in the tail feathers. Then also adding some blue here where the other wing feathers peek through. We're creating that shadow that separates the wing feathers from the body. Now continuing with the paint that's left on the brush, we are going to add some brush strokes just here and there. We are now moving on to more of a mid shade, starting with our dark orange that we have mixed. Now because of the colors we use to mix these two colors, they will also act as transparent layers. It might not look like it's very visible, but it will make the difference when we add the lighter colors on top.
Now just taking some Pensiana and just adding a transparent layer over here. After adding the burnt sienna, I'm just going to wipe the excess paint off so that we can blend the burnt sienna out. And then very carefully, just slightly blending in that blue with the burnt sienna. Gonna add some more burnt sienna at the top here. So I switched to this lighter yellowish color that we've mixed, but quickly realized that it's too light for where we are now. So I then continued using yellow ochre instead. We are going to use short flick motions with the tip side of our flat brush to continue creating the feather-like effect. The yellow ochre sort of acts as our base layer of oils for this area. So we are almost covering the whole space, but not completely, and we are still using the short brush strokes, following the shape of the body to keep it three-dimensional. For these top wing feathers, I use the flat side of the brush. Continuing with the yellow ochre, I'm just going to add some more highlighted areas down here. I like yellow ochre from Windsor & Newton because it acts quite opaque out of the tube, but when mixed with certain colors or mediums, it can quickly become more transparent, and in this case, it's quite useful. And then also some yellow ochre at the top here. Now I'm switching to my small angled brush and titanium white. 
and we're going to start painting the top of the head over here once again using that flick motion with the brush creating that feather effect. Adding a very small drop of linseed oil or turpentine can make these brush strokes a little smoother. Also remember to follow the shape of the head with the direction of your brush strokes. Over here blending our white into our yellow ochre with the same motion. Here I'm adding some strokes on top of the burnt amber that we applied. Now we're going to move on to the beak area, also applying our titanium white in the highlighted areas. And I'm using the very tip of my angled brush to get that very fine lines. You can also switch out to a small detail brush if that would be easier for you. And then for the bottom area, I'm going to leave a small gap where we will add the darker color and just beneath it, we're going to add a thin white line. And then also another thin line at the very bottom of the bee. Now we're also just going to paint in this white area over here. We are going to start with a very thin line and then to make it less of a plain straight line, we are going to use the very sharp tip of the angled brush to add in some short brush strokes. Now moving to the chest area and switching out to our lightest blue using our same motion in the brush strokes. I'm also adding my brush strokes in slightly different directions to give it more of a realistic feel. We do want these random brush strokes creating that feather effect, but we don't want to go too crazy. Now switching to our dark matte blue and we're going to move on to our wing feathers and start adding in some color. We are continuing with our angled brush because it can create very thin strokes and by twisting the brush to the flat side we can also create much thicker strokes. This always works very well for me in areas such as these. Now we are switching to the lighter, more vibrant blue. 
and then start adding it here at the top of the wing. Then also a little at the very edge here, creating that separation. Now switching to titanium white. We're just going to bring in some white details. I'm also just going to add a very thin white line on the edge of the feathers to separate them from each other. Now switching back to our medium dark blue and we're moving back to the beak area. So we're adding this medium dark blue in our shadow areas. Then switching to our darkest blue black, mixing it in. Now taking some of our vibrant blue Now also a little bit of our lightest blue Now I'm just going to go over with some more titanium white. Now I'm switching back to this vibrant blue and we're going to add some highlights to this black area. Very tiny short brush strokes. To get this very thin strokes with the angled brush, I sort of brush the brush on the palette on both sides when lifting the paint to get the bristles squished together and as flat as possible. I'm also just going to add a little blue here. Now taking our medium brownish color that we've mixed and we're just going to add in some brush strokes over here.
and then also some of this dark blue beneath that. Now we're just going to take some of our light orange and add a little bit in here. And then we're going to take that same color just to add a shadow effect over here. Maybe adding a little bit of the darker orange on top. Now we can move back to this light yellowish color we've mixed. And then very lightly adding your brush strokes in a flick motion. When adding these brush strokes, we keep the shapes in mind and follow in the same directions. This is what will help making your subject more three-dimensional. If you are struggling to apply the thin brush strokes on top of other layers, it could be because your paint layers are too thick or you're pressing too hard and it's blending with the colors beneath. What might help is picking up a little bit of a thicker paint on your paintbrush or by adding a very small amount of clean turpentine or linseed oil into your color. Switching to the medium brownish color. We just keep adding some short brush strokes. Now we switch to this light beige color we have mixed and we're just going to start adding in some more highlights. So you can see we are moving to our lighter colors by building layer upon layer. Watch the angle and direction of the brush strokes. You will notice where I haven't painted a lot of layers underneath, the color shows up a lot more than in some other areas. Also, the more I want this color to blend with the colors underneath, the harder I will press. Overall, I'm working very softly and barely touching the canvas.
Right now you will also be able to see all the different colors coming through, making the painting a little more interesting to look at. Now we are adding some cadmium yellow pale to some areas. Now taking some ultramarine blue and just going over some of the areas over here. Just making it a little bit more vibrant in some areas. And we're also working very carefully not to blend everything together. Now I'm continuing doing some detail and refinement. I'm taking this dark blue, adding in some areas to create a shadow effect. Now adding some burnt sienna for the shadow effect under here. And some burnt amber on the other side. Now I'm going to remove the excess paint on a paper towel. We're not going to clean our brush in turpentine because we don't want the brush wet. And then we're just going to softly blend in the burnt amber. Now moving to the tail, I'm going to take this medium dark blue, just going to create a slight highlight. And now on top of that, we're going to add this medium vibrant blue. Now we are taking titanium white and paint a thin line on the side here. We also need a little bit more white on the wing feather over here. Just going to add in some more detail. Now taking some of this lighter yellow and adding some more detail down here. Switching to our blue black to do some more refinement. So when doing refinement, I look at my highlights and my shadows and sharpening my lines a little bit more to make the detail stand out.
There's not a lot of detail on these other feathers, but I don't want to leave it flat, so I'm just going to add some blue. And then I'm just going to continue adding some more detail and refinement. This area still looks a little bit flat, so I'm going to add some of this yellow. So that's basically it for the bird, but we still have to quickly paint in the branch. So I'm going to switch back to my flat brush number four, and we're going to take some of our blue black, and I'm going to start painting this area underneath the bird. Now switching to our dark orange we've mixed, just adding a little bit here in the center. Now switching to yellow ochre for the top part and adding some highlights. Back to the dark color just to add some here. And now I'm going to add a little bit of Bentiana. Now I'm going to take some of this light yellow and just add some at the top here. I'm just bringing out this light color with some random brush strokes, only because I don't like that chopped off look. And now I'm just doing some random finishing touches. Now just to throw a little bit of paint on the claw and doing some last minute refinement. I just added the medium dark blue on the one side and the light blue for a little highlight on the other. And then lastly I just want to add a little bit of black here for a shadow. So 
So this brings us to the end of this tutorial. I haven't decided what to do with the background yet. I'm thinking about toning it just a little darker with burnt amber, but I would love to see what you come up with in your recreations. Thank you for following along. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really enjoyed this process and it has really improved my work and I hope it can do the same for you.